go back into um, our image class here and go back up to the top. There are basically some private methods that we want to create. So I'll quickly add these here. So if we say private methods, okay, and we add an interface like so. Oops, in fact, I don't want to do it. Interface, and this is going to be for image like that. Right, and we want to add our void in it implementation that's the one we need there's nothing taken there and the other one we can add here as well is also going to be our render at because render at isn't one that it's again it's an internal one that we use it's not exposed externally so we can actually define that here which was um, render at and we had a CG point which was going to be point oops we then had text coordinates which was going to be um, floats and it was going to be a float array okay so we'll put the square brackets there and that was coordinates and then we had uh, quad vertices which again was a GL float array and we called that vertices like so okay and we can then finish that off with an end <clears throat> okay so if I now build that Oops, I've got uh, another little mistake up here. Get rid of that bracket. Okay, so what you'll see is we've got uh, another couple of little arrows here. And this is because there's two classes that we haven't yet finished adding to um, our method. So that's fine. We can quickly go and add those now. Um, if we look at the header file, these were the setters um, that we actually had at the bottom here which I haven't created yet. So if I go back into the M file and we go all the way down to the bottom, okay, and we can we can add these these extra two classes in that we need. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just put these all in in one, in one hit. Um, there we go. Okay, so these are the these are very simple ones. This is um, set color filter red, so it takes um, four floats: one for red, one for green, one for blue, one for alpha. And all it does is it goes and defines or sets the necessary um, filter array that we had defined with those values. Uh, and as you saw earlier, inside our drawing code, we use GL um, color to be able to define the color using those parameters. And the other one which we did was set alpha. And again, so this is where I'm actually just setting the third or fourth as it is um, value in our array to be the alpha value. So very straightforward. Um, so if we now actually compile that, we succeed. So we've actually now got our image class in running, uh, not running, but working, it's compiling okay, we're not getting any errors. Um, but there are a couple of things that we now need to do uh, inside our texture2d class to actually make sure that um, we're getting the filtering right. So earlier we talked about the fact that uh, I've added some extra bits to Texture2D to handle filtering, which if I um, go back up uh, where are we? Have a look. to the inits, here we go. Um, you can see that we were passing in a filter and that when we actually implemented the Texture2D, it was able to take a filter value, uh, which it wasn't able to take out of the box as was. So we need to basically go into Texture2D uh, and we need to add that to it. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll bring up the Texture2D header file here. Uh, and we need to go through and we need to identify where we are actually needing to do that. So if we have a look through this, we'll see that um, one of the key things inside the header file here, if I scroll down, we've got um, Texture2D, we've got init with image, okay, and we pass in an image, but we actually need to pass in a filter as well. So this is the first thing that we need to change. So if I put in here filter, <clears throat> it's a GL enum, remember that we're going to be passing in, which is GL nearest or GL linear, and I'm going to call that filter. So we've done that at the init with image level, which we needed to be able to do. Um, now, if we go a bit further up, we'll also see that there is an init with data. Um, this is an internal, um, this is called internally inside GL texture 2D as well. Oh, sorry, texture 2D as well. So we need to make sure that this can take the filter. Um, so GL enum filter will pop in there. Okay. 
Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, we don't need to add anything else to that. So we'll save that and we'll then go into the actual implementations themselves. So in here, I'm going to use the drop down. Uh, I want to find the init with image implementation, which is just here. And we need to add filter to this. So if I say filter GL enum and we're going to call it filter. So we've added that in there. Um, we know that, that that's going to be passed in now when we actually do that piece of work. Um, so there's nothing else there that we need to do. Um, apart from if we go further down inside that particular init method, so if we scroll down, we'll see right at the bottom, it actually calls, uh, here you go, init with data, all right? And init with data, again, we need to be able to pass in because the actual filtering doesn't get defined inside this method. In it with data does the real work of defining the image. Um, it just gets called by the in it with image if you're passing the Im an image in rather than data in. So we need to add the filter to this as well. So if I add at the end here, the fact that we're going to be um, sending in the filter information. Okay, this passed. So what we'll do is we'll say filter and it's passing in filter, all right? So that's that done. Um, and I'll pop back up to the init with data, uh, which is a bit further at the top. Here we go. And we can see here's the uh, method signature. So again, we need to add a filter to the end, GL enum filter. Okay. So that's, that's changed the, um, the actual headers there. So if I save that and do a build, okay, we can see we've done that um, and we've got one warning. Let's have a look here, may not respond. So let's go to where that is. Okay, and that's because we've got, uh, that's actually inside the init with text, I believe. We go, yeah, so there's the, sorry, init with string. So again, if we're doing that, we would need to pass in a filter. Um, for, for What I'm gonna do for this one is I'm actually going to just say filter gl underscore um, linear. Okay, so I'm gonna just hard code the string side of things. We're not really using that at the moment um, to always use the linear filter, okay? So I can save again and I can build again and that's got rid of the errors that we had there. So if I go back up to the init with data, uh, here we go. So what happening is, is this is really where the filtering is being defined and the filter is being passed in now. Um, but what we need to do is we actually need to make use of that filter. And where we do that is in these commands just here. Okay, you can see at the moment, linear is hard coded in there as the filter which is being used for the textures. And there are two types of filter. You've got a texture minimum filter if we're scaling down and a texture mag filter if you're scaling up. Um, and I want them both to be the same and I both want them both to use filter. Um, so what I need to do is I'm gonna change that to say filter. I'm then going to copy and paste this line here. And as I said before, min is one. The other one we need to make sure we cover is mag. So if I do mag filter, there we have it. So save and build and that works. So that's that's all we needed to do. We just needed to make those small changes to make sure that when we actually create a texture 2D object, we can pass in the filter and that the filtering will be used inside those particular um, objects themselves. And that's now what we've done. So we're really at a point where we can um, have a go at trying this out. We can we can try and, and play with our image uh, and make sure that our image class is actually working and actually doing something. Um, and also make a couple more changes to the actual um, main view that we're using. So if we go into